automated market makers to hold and lock up tons of HBAR to lower or reduce the circulating supply, which can then, in theory, push the price up when volume comes. The number of addresses that hold at least one single Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high. What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. First up, on the Cypherium price chart, we can see in the past week alone, from one cent all the way to four and a half cents, we have pumped about 334%. And as you can see, we are approaching, like many assets, that March-April high, as you can see, tagging that level to the wick. Now, Cypherium or CPH does have some massive partnerships. You can see its market cap, according to CoinMarketCap, is at 17 million. Now, there's been a lot of hype for Cypherium. As you can see, FedNow Services chooses Cypherium as a service provider. Now, the Federal Reserve Banks are developing the FedNow service to facilitate nationwide reach of instant payment services by financial institutions. And access will be provided through the Federal Reserve's FedLine network, which serves more than 10,000 financial institutions directly or through their agents. So I was posting some information about Cypherium yesterday in Discord. We can see that Cypherium has had central bank roundtables with the Central Bank of France, the People's Bank of China, who also met with Ripple in 2017, and the European Central Bank, or the ECB, which is massive. Now, this is a proof-of-work blockchain, and they do provide some information on why they chose proof-of-work rather than using maybe a directed acyclic graph, which I found to be very interesting. And they're looking at a variety of use cases, way beyond just central bank digital currency use cases but we'll talk about that as well and notice they're looking at smart cities big data artificial intelligence 5g and iot now cypherium is also partnered with the bsn or the blockchain service network which is a casper partner remember that casper was chosen by the city of fuzhou as their primary blockchain now what's even bigger and i know we talked about this as soon as we saw cypherium listed side by side with ripple and algorand is the dmi symposium or omfif so we have the DMI Symposium, we have the Blockchain Service Network, their partners, Microsoft, AWS, Google Cloud, the typicals, alongside IBM, but also the U.S. Faster Payments Council. We already know Ripple has heavy ties there. Now going to omfif.com, the official monetary and financial institutions forum. Go to the About tab, and as you can see, with investable assets of $43 trillion at the heart of this network. A giant think tank for central banking, economic policy, public investment, neutral platform for the public and private sector. Now, it seems like they've edited this because I read this regularly. We can see London, the U.S. Previously, they would always mention Singapore as well. Now, under the omfit.org website and looking at the DMI Symposium, we can see some huge partners including Ripple, Algorand, Accenture, Meta, Microsoft, Visa, and Swift. And as we scroll down, we can see the Digital Monetary Institute members, the DMI members, Algorand, Accenture, many of the same names, but also Cypherium, alongside Goldman Sachs, IBM, FIS, MasterCard, HSBC, Onyx with JP Morgan, RTGS Global, Microsoft, PwC, SDX, think Switzerland, and Swift. Now, right on Cypherium's website, we can see ISO 222 compliant. Seems like everybody's marketing themselves like that nowadays. We can see the CBDC update, the new trillion dollar opportunity, approximately 37 trillion US dollars in circulation around the world. In the next few years, we believe that all paper fiat currencies will be digitized. Cypherium is integrating its solutions to the newly realized central bank digital currency financial system and will capitalize in the multi-trillion dollar market opportunity. Now, this was a little roundtable of central bank digital currencies talking about blockchain and Cypherium CEO right there, alongside many people part of OMFIF, that huge official monetary institute. So one thing is certain, Cypherium is not a scam or it does not appear to be a scam. It is partnered with some of the largest organizations and it seems like they have some decent publicity. But it is still a very young asset and its market cap is what I'd consider to be a micro cap. So it does mean there could be some huge opportunity in the future, but we also have to keep tabs on the circulating supply and the total supply, along with the max supply of Cypherium. So I was reading through the white paper, and if we go down to use cases, digital identity, central bank digital currency, we're going to click this right here on the left. And they provide an architecture diagram to really illustrate the examples of a central bank digital currency use case between a digital euro and then the Chinese digital currency electronic protocol, the DCEP right there. Now, one last thing I wanted to cover is their commentary on a DAG. So many are wondering, okay, why is Cypherium a proof of work blockchain seems inefficient? Instead of being a directed acyclic graph, which is highly scalable, we can see there are a number of new distributed ledger technologies that do not use traditional blockchain data structures, favoring instead a DAG, which allows blocks to be authored and accepted simultaneously instead of a single total ordered chain. 
They say Hedera Hashgraph is one example. We're going to dive into some huge HBAR news today as well. However, these graphs are not without their weaknesses. There's always trade-offs in the blockchain trilemma in terms of security, scalability, and decentralization. One notable shortcoming of DAGs is the recovery of data. If a network participant loses connection to the network for whatever reasons, it is much harder to recover the graph information than it is to retrace the history of a true blockchain. The lack of total ordering also presents a significant barrier for DAG to support smart contracts, limiting its utility. Interesting. We can also notice on Pantera Capital's portfolio, we can see that they have in fact invested into, of course, API3 and a variety of projects, but also Cypherium. As you can see right, where are we? Right there. Right under Cosmos. Meanwhile, on CoinMarketCal, looking at the calendar of big events coming up, we can see the ETH merge, a variety of other projects, some microcaps, and of course, nobody mentions the XLS20 amendment for the XRP ledger that enables support for NFTs. I think that's huge and still deserves to be mentioned here. Next up, the Skybridge Capital founder Anthony is making a $250 million bet on the Google of crypto. And Anthony says that his firm is betting heavily on Algorand. He thinks the cryptocurrency will replace many of its competing blockchains. Algo will challenge the leading competitors in the crypto industry, just like Alphabet did in the early days of the internet. In quotes, I've got a quarter billion dollars in Algorand right now. I think Algorand will be the Google. Now, Algorand was also chosen to be the sponsor of FIFA, which is huge. In quotes, I think ultimately when the big enterprises get onto the tokenization side of the market and they start working in the world of DeFi, they'll need something that's scalable like Algo. Let's see, Anthony told CNBC his funds hold about $9 billion in assets, with $1.3 billion of that consisting of crypto investments. And looking at Algorand's ecosystem on their website, 500 global organizations leveraging its technology, technical, financial, ecosystems of applications, university partners, and key stakeholders, as you can see. This is what I call an ecosystem. This is massive. Next up, XRP. So we can see these on-demand liquidity gateways shared by Short the FOMO. The ODL exchange volumes of Bitso and Bitstamp have surpassed Binance. This is the first time I've seen it for sure. Very interesting. Short the FOMO says still very early this month, but still having an asset with utility has its perks, especially in a bear market. Wake me up when September ends, guys. I am sick of waiting just as much as anybody. It's great to see the volume and actual use case and different things building on the XRPL, but let's get this show on the road. Next up, shared by status, so we have Bitcoin's Lightning Network versus Ripple's on-demand liquidity. So let's zoom into this bad boy. And we can see on the left-hand side, Lightning Network is just a layer two scaling solution. As shared many times, the Bitcoin Lightning Network, yeah, it works to an extent, but it will never service the world, let alone even really a small country. Notice that Bitcoin's Lightning Network requires payment channels that are pre-funded. XRP requires no pre-funded accounts. Pre-funded accounts are what we're trying to get away from in the world of correspondent banking. Now I saw Crypto Mason share something really cool today with HBAR and Bitcoin. He basically started out with $100 in a Bitcoin wallet and $100 in an HBAR wallet. What you do for this example is you send the HBAR to another HBAR wallet back and forth 1,000 times. You do the same thing with Bitcoin. Remember, they both start with $100. When all is said and done, the Bitcoin transactions essentially run out within you know, 5 to 10 transactions. That $100 is now zero because the fees. Don't even get me started on the confirmation time. What you'll see with HBAR is when you're sending HBAR between wallets. If you've done it before, you know it takes seconds just like XRP. And after 1,000 transactions of sending HBAR between just two wallets, you still end up with over $99. I think $99.90 after 1,000 transactions. Bitcoin, you're out of money. You're at zero after I believe maybe five to 10. And even if I'm off by that five to 10 transaction number, I guarantee it will not last 1,000 transactions. You have to consider time and cost. Next up, some HBAR news. So on September 1st, we went over this LG announcement of LG, a Hedera governing council member building an HBAR wallet. Very interesting. LG also announced they're gonna be incorporating non-fungible tokens on their line of smart televisions. So we can see HBAR to the moon, LG is building a crypto wallet on Hedera to support NFTs on its TVs. Millions of TVs in the future will have Hedera accounts in them. For all of these TVs, they each need a Hedera account. You can display your NFTs on a large screen or log into a streaming service based on the subscription token in your wallet. And just to paint a picture, this is not just a mom and pop shop. LG led the way in global sales of home appliances, over 20 billion US dollars in value. So use your imagination for what this means for HBAR in the future. Next up, Crypto Eddie sharing a clip of Brad Garlinghouse out here in my neck of the woods in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the Coin Agenda Caribbean event. 
We can see that he says, in quotes, Ripple is in a position that I compare to Amazon circa 1997. Amazon in those days was Amazon Books. Today, obviously, it does a lot of things. They started with books, they did it well, and they expanded to everything. I mean, we can think Amazon with Whole Foods and everything in between. Quotes, I think of Ripple, our first vertical, books, is to cross-border payments. Now you can see they're expanding to micropayments, they're expanding to NFTs, they're expanding to lending, they're expanding to pooling liquidity together between OTC desks, DEXs, and even CFI exchanges. And now we have XLS20 coming with the NFTs. And remember that update we talked about automated market makers coming to the XRP ledger, AMMs, so we have DeFi on the way. And of course, Flare Networks is another extra. Also, I just wanted to shout out Hashpack. No, I'm not paid to talk about Hashpack. I wish I was, but I just wanted to say this. Dear other Layer 1, even Layer 0 projects, Hedera's HBAR Hashpack Wallet is absolutely awesome because it's a Chrome extension. It's a mobile application. You have the ability to stake and unstake within seconds. We have an Assets tab, a tab for NFTs and collectibles. You can stake, unstake, choose between nodes anytime. You have the history of transactions. Hashpack has plenty of downloads along with interoperability with DEXs on the way, including Saucer Swap. You can buy and sell HBAR right within this wallet. So it really seems like an all-in-one solution, and this is important for other projects to really replicate in their own way. And I know other projects have this, but I just want to emphasize, the better the wallet, the easier it is for me and you or somebody that is not savvy in crypto, is so important to lower that barrier to entry, which leads to more adoption. And unfortunately, there's other chains I use today, and not gonna lie, it's a pain in the butt. I can't imagine somebody that doesn't know crypto can just come in. It has to be as easy as really creating a Facebook account. We have a long way for crypto to go, but that means there is still huge opportunity in the years ahead. So Algo's pair wallet, love it, has all of those features, except you cannot stake or delegate. I believe they removed that. Um, I think they actually removed staking for Algo off of Ledger. So if you're using Ledger Live, don't quote me on that. But another option, as silly as it sounds, is staking on Coinbase for like 5.75% if you trust Coinbase. I also wish Casper's wallets and Casper Live worked better on mobile. I'm hoping there's a mobile application. I know somebody's going to say, oh, just, you know, use it as a browser on your phone. But the functionality for me is not nice. Even bouncing between Apple and then Android, it could just be better. Dag Stargazer, awesome. No complaints. I'm excited for some NFT infrastructure. XRP, some wallets, awesome. Bifrost for Flare, awesome. But I would just like them to have all of these features and maybe even have more than one wallet. And there's solutions like this that exist today, but I just think Hashpack did an amazing job. You can see Hashpack, the only wallet which securely integrates with SaucerSwap Labs, the DEX on Hedera. So we have the NFT ecosystem for Hedera doing well with Zeus Markets, but we also want the DEX and all of these automated market makers to hold and lock up tons of HBAR to lower or reduce the circulating supply, which can then, in theory, push the price up when volume comes. You can see over 50,000 Chrome extension installs, over 100,000 accounts created. Awesome. Next up, shared by OnChain Challenge. This is fascinating. With Bitcoin analytics, we can see the number of addresses that hold at least one single Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high, now at over 900,000 addresses. So there are over 900,000 separate addresses that each hold at least one single Bitcoin. That's an all-time high. So while prices are dumping, while we are in a bear market, no doubt about it, the largest accounts, just like every single time in every single market cycle, are accumulating. You can look at previous bear market lows here and here. You're going to see a very similar thing. Next up, by Bitcoin Magazine, the Bitcoin price chart, an illustration or a short story about market psychology over the past 10 years. We can see the huge pump. Bitcoin is a bubble. At the bottom, Bitcoin is dead. The next Bitcoin bubble. Bitcoin's dead. Bitcoin bubble. Bitcoin's dead. Almost a double bottom, really a psych out, and then the Bitcoin having came, and then boom. Bitcoin's a bubble, and now we're back to Bitcoin is dead. Also, speaking of FIFA, we have Johnny Crypto. FIFA launches its new NFT platform on Algorand, shared by the Bitcoinist. So just another reason to pay attention to Algo. We have Anthony, $250 million backing that. So, I mean, he definitely has a vested interest, but I personally believe in Algo. I was buying Algo in 2019. I never saw anybody talk about it. I found it on my own as soon as it was listed on Binance.us, and I never looked back. Looking at some assets in the 4-hour price chart, it seems like Cardano is leading the way thus far in this retracement. We can see Algorand seems to be in second place. And looking at XRP, the same exact thing, just creeping at the lows at $0.33. Cents. Yet to get a big pop. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. All links can be found in my link tree linked in the video description, and I will catch you in the next one.